Hey everybody, uh, I'm Skytrius and today I want to show you a project I've been working on. It's called Todo. Uh, so Todo is a node-based task editor and it's something I've been working on quite a lot, actually for about four months and um, it has kind of shifted and um, in terms of what it should achieve and just the, in general the ideas I've, I've done uh, for this approach, they've kind of gone uh, very far now. Uh, so this is maybe my second or third rework on on this concept, but I think this one actually is very nice. Uh, so what you can see here is everything is laid out as a data tree in a sense. So each node is connected to another node um, like this. So the draw mode uh, has a bunch of children and each child can have other children. So, and you can kind of do top-down things on them, like doing this stuff, um, enabling, disabling these. Um, so that's very cool in a way, um, because it allows you to do things very easily on, on a lot of um, operations like this, right? Like uh, toggling the state of these. Um, so if you don't know how a node tree looks, it's kind of like this. Um, in a way, it looks like this. It kind of has it points to one node, and this node has children, or this node now knows about this node, in, in my case. And in general, it's just a very nice approach to laying out uh, data. So um, a bunch of benefits already from this are stuff like this. I can just kind of take out a node and place it anywhere else without it really being too complex to add as a you know as an action or like as a as a cool thing right uh, if you have maybe arrays where the stuff kind of lies in you kind of have to take out this stuff from an array you maybe rearrange the array uh, all crazy stuff whereas here you just kind of change the the pointers where these things kind of look at the at this node, you now just have to change where this node kind of looks at, and this node is a previous node. All this kind of stuff is just a, a lot easier to do. Also, you get the power that you can actually undo-redo this quite easily, um, and, and it just works, you know. So, um, I have a bunch of stuff written down that I actually kind of want to show you. Um, so that's one advantage. So I'm I have um, I can actually not read this. Uh, so it's a lot easier to do this stuff, and it's also a lot more efficient in my opinion, right? So instead of the array argument I just gave, it's it's a lot more efficient to do this stuff. Also, I have a I have a lot of more power. So you see here, I have this notes info, and I have subdivided the way this editor works in kind of three ways right now. So you can see here the tasks, there actually only exists 87. So 87 uh, tasks in general. And then you have 360 actual words that are um, unique in a way. And then you have boxes, which are kind of the underlying representation of the words. Um, so boxes can actually be uh, really unique. So you can have the same word here, and you can kind of autocomplete them to make them um, the same, right? So the boxes count went down, but you can actually edit them at the same time now, since they're the same box, uh, the same underlying box. So the text points to the box below, and if the box is the same for a lot of these, you can do a bunch of stuff based on them. So I've actually, one idea I had was to make this um, kind of automatic or kind of be toggable or not toggable. So you can actually have a lot of words auto-connect or if you don't want them to auto-connect, you can just disable this stuff very quickly and work on single data. Another thing is I can store a lot of data based on the text here. So you can see I can jump down uh, based on this, I can jump back to whatever the task was last on. So it's not like uh, just raw text where you kind of have to guess this or anything else. It's just a lot better, right? 
So we can jump up, I can jump down, I can jump up another parent. So it's kind of the way you would control it with the keyboard. Um, I actually prefer the mouse in this case. So we can jump back. Yeah. And I can jump down to the children, I can center again, and so on and so forth. So obviously, since this is not raw text, it's a little bit more difficult doing stuff like this, where it's just in, in, in raw text, it would maybe be add a new line. Uh, in this case, it's actually adding a node on the right, maybe. And you can see the task count maybe go up. So move view towards selected. Um, OK, that doesn't autocomplete. Nice. Um, but uh, no no clue why. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so it's kind of what I sh wanted to show you. And another advantage of this is obviously um, this. We can just kind of switch uh, around how we want to actually draw the data. So we can go from this kind of uh, text editor-like view to this Kanban view. So look at it. So you have the upper parents here. They all have sort of small data. And now in this view, um, you can see it's, it actually is only showing the interesting data that you might want to quickly look over. Um, and yeah, so like to-do, I have a draw mode stuff here. Um, and now we can just kind of jump back. So actually, you can move with a mouse here. You can jump back. It's automatically kind of jump to that thing. So hey, I maybe want to do Vim star key map. Let's jump to that. Uh, here are the children. OK, OK, let's go back. Um, smarter center, OK, and so on and so forth. So obviously, this is very powerful, in my opinion, because we can actually do uh, quite a lot of modes, or just modes which some users um, maybe want or not, right? So I have a bunch of things I maybe want to try out. So the top down node uh, would be this here. The Kanban mode would be this. Uh, I have another style that I actually had for this project before. So maybe I want to try to add that. I also have a deta detail mode here, uh, maybe where you can show very specific data about each task um, that you can edit very quickly or just kind of showcase. And yeah, I mean, that's kind of it right now. Um, this project actually started four months ago. Um, maybe I can showcase that. Um, it, it's uh, not open source, but uh, I've been tracking all my progress. So I think it started, whoops, nice, thank you, um, in August here, yeah. And now we're here. So um, it took a little bit of time because I had to experiment a lot and uh, there was a lot of prototyping and then I actually was already happy with the thing I did. And now kind of after a few reworks, I landed on this and I actually really, really like it. And I think this can benefit a lot of people. Um, so let's see. Uh, so I just kind of want to show you how I work with this stuff right now. Um, I'm going to show you how the mouse kind of works. Uh, you can just kind of go onto any node and just kind of highlight it or go to it when you click down with the left mouse button. Um, you can start typing. You can go to another node, uh, just kind of type as well. Like I said, if, if nodes are connected to each other, they will type at the same time. Um, and that's kind of how the mouse works. You can uh, autocomplete stuff uh, or like, I mean, uh, toggle the states of these. Uh, you can kind of drag them around with uh, the right mouse button. And that's pretty much uh, about the mouse. It's really just for traversing. Uh, if you hold down the middle button, you can kind of uh, scroll around. Otherwise, uh, if you use a keyboard, it will automatically kind of try to guess where you want to be or like center in the middle um, or like if you change these modes it will also do that. Uh, so with a keyboard it's just going to jump um, 
uh, to the next uh, next task here. So you see from the automation, the next one would be fuel. Because automation has children, you can actually jump down via control down. And now we're here. Um, so that's about it, really. So we can type some other stuff. We can delete things. Um, we can kill some of these. Oh, that's a bug. Um, but essentially, it's kind of the way it works. Um, uh, I have a bunch of debug information here, like the history buffer, the undo buffer, uh, the notes info, the options that you have for now, just like the font size, um, you can actually do with scrolling as well. Uh, the tabulation size, uh, how you maybe want to look at this. Uh, maybe you don't want to see th uh, the sidebar here. Um, you can kind of guess it at, at some point. Um, but maybe you do want to have it slightly. The drag alpha, which shows you the parent and stuff, you can do that. And uh, I also have an autosave function right now because I disable autosave uh, when I'm kind of programming and breaking a lot of stuff. So I also have a theme editor inbuilt right now. Um, I can kind of click on the, uh, oh, actually I removed all the stuff I have in here, huh? Anyway, so you can see like the text done, we can change the color of that really quickly. And nice. Anything you can really change the UI that you see here, you can change that. I'm not going to showcase that, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so this is actually one thing that I, I think every every application should allow you to do because it's it's not too difficult to do, right? It's it's very simple. Um, so I mean that's really it. Uh, I have a lot of ideas right now uh, that I've written down here. You can see uh, a lot of these actions are actually done already. Um, uh, I think bugs was also done. Um, but one thing I was recently working on was the interactive stuff on the search. So we can search for words and you can kind of jump uh, across the, the words are the same. Um, so very interactively and then you can kind of exit and that's that. You can also jump to the last location that you kind of highlighted. Um, so I can highlight this one. You can see it's a, a little a little hidden here, but essentially you can hide that and then you can go uh, and work on anything else. Um, and then you can jump back to it and jump back to the other place. Um, and you can see it's highlighted in here as well. You can quickly jump back to that. Just the same. So pretty awesome already. Um, and like I said, the, the dragging is also pretty cool. It's actually uh, if you drag something and place it somewhere else, it's just going to be deleted. Uh, okay. Uh, those boxes uh, should be characters that somehow got deleted. I don't know why. Um, it's a short bug. Uh, but also the cut and paste works with the dragging. So you could place it like this. You could cut and place it anywhere else. Uh, same way the copy works. It's just kind of a raw copy. And yeah, that's uh, essentially it. That's all I kind of wanted to show you. And obviously, still very early for this project. But if you want to follow my development, uh, I post a lot of stuff on my Twitter. Uh, my Twitter is Skytrius. Um, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, there we go. So recently, I've been. Uh, just kind of uh, posting a lot of videos on to do in general. So um, that's it. Uh, maybe if you want to stick around a little bit, I've actually, if you want to kind of see the development of this, uh, I'm working in uh, with the language Odin. Uh, it's actually a lot nicer than C. Uh, before that, I would usually use C just because it's very simple and very nice to use. But Odin kind of takes a step forwards in this. Um, and you can see here's the editor. Um, here's the node stuff. Um, here's the underlying way the data works. It's uh, Here's all the notes I have in a slice. Um, 
here's what a task node actually has. It's uh, like a previous next node. It's a parent task node that you can jump back to. Um, head and tails and the jump task. Um, that will be the children of a task. And then you have the text data. Also head and tail. It's just a lot better if you do head and tail. Honestly, I've, I've, I've experienced this a lot. Um, then the actual data that's important right now, we only have the state right now. That's uh, that state will be like a normal, done, cancelled, um, and then a bit of other information. And then a text, uh, like I said before, is just uh, pointers to other texts, so that you can quickly jump around. Then the actual box pointer, and whether it's active, blah, blah, blah. Then the actual box here is the information on the text. So the column of the text, uh, the length of it, the, the raw bytes. And then obviously you got to do a lot of um, groundwork to get stuff done. And um, like how do you init uh, nodes? Uh, I have a lot of stuff here done automatically with history pushing um, because that has to work very nicely. And yeah, in general, it's it's a little bit more complicated, you know, to get stuff going. But um, you know, here's for example the way I draw a task. It's just one function of how you draw a single task, and it's gonna draw uh, the, the the text here based on the head and tail. And it's gonna move around. It's gonna maybe draw highlights, um, and maybe the drag as well. And uh, here we have the actual Kanban drawing. So it's like 50 or 100 lines or so, it's not too complicated, right? So the Kanban is a little bit more complicated because we do uh, kind of the text layouting, if you've seen that. Um, so once text gets a little too big, it's going to be uh, laid out in here on the right. So you can see if I move left, it's going to go there. So it's kind of there where this would be one line. It's here it's on two lines. So it's a little bit more complicated here, but um, Man, this is not really complicated, right? <laughs> so let's see. I also have a bunch of box stuff for inputting characters. A lot of this stuff, uh, a lot of the times it looks the same because of the text tail stuff. Um, <clears throat> so when we remove stuff, we all always have to care about these things. That's kind of complicated about it, but a lot better than kind of what we have before, where it was like lists of lists, and you had to think in arrays more, um, and kind of take out the element out of the array. Oh yeah, here's a way I actually do my um, UI, if you've seen that, so it's, uh, uh, thank you. So here's the nodes stuff, so it's uh, like a window, um, it has rows and columns right now, so you can see it's like a top bar with the nodes info. You can see it's a margin and then column auto, so it kind of automatically assi assigns the size um, for each column, and so on and so forth. So custom UI um, based on Ryan Fleury, actually. And yeah, so these are really the things I have right now. So like the, the scripts here, you can see I have my custom engine here. So if you don't know, or uh, I didn't say it, but um, this editor actually has um, a cache software vendor based on um, fucking hell, based on um, ArcSize stuff. I can actually show you software. Yeah, it's it's based on this essentially. So it you kind of have the benefit of software rendering that it's very simple to do stuff because it's just you know, pixel bytes or pixel, it's like a pixel buffer that you have to change the, the data in, and it's very simple, right? And uh, the caching part happens where you just kind of look at the changes of the draw commands and then if nothing changes, you don't redraw or if something changes, you try to look where it ha was and then you only try to redraw a small fraction of that. So it, it gets cut into like small boxes and that actually has have to redraw. So 
maybe if I can show you this, um, this is to do. Uh, it shouldn't consume anything. Uh, it seems like it does. Fuck. But uh, wow, why does it have so much memory? Anyway, so usually it shouldn't redraw too much, um, and this should be at like zero percent or whatever. But um, in a way, that's that. So that's that. So the engine is very, very easy to kind of um, rework in a way so we could actually jump to other um, ways, maybe hardware rendering and stuff like that. But in a way, it's really about um, the scripts in here. I have a node, which is really a lot of this stuff uh, about the underlying data. I have the editor. Here, um, this is the entire editor, really, all the data behind it. Um, I actually save a lot of the data, like the options, um, and like which one was selected, so you can uh, instantly jump back to which one you started. So maybe you, you select uh, this one here, you close, and then you kind of jump back to it. Or uh, which one you have highlighted, stuff like that. Uh, oh, I didn't save, whoops. Uh, there you go. And then you qu can quickly jump between that. Stuff like that, or the jumping I've, I've kind of been working on recently. Um, but yeah, in, in a way, this is kind of how it works. I, maybe let's go through the scripts here. Uh, I have a bunch of helper functions for lerping and drawing text aligned. I have the history buffer. Also, um, if you don't know, RxI has a block about this. A simple undo system, which is very simple. Um, obviously, you kind of have to have like memory and pointers, uh, otherwise that wouldn't kind of work. In here, it's uh, how many lines? 200 lines, so very simple. Um, and it works very nicely. I can maybe show that history. So I made it global because I'm only going to use one history, so we have to init it. Uh, init. Here it just kind of has 100 uh, memory location, or like 100. Uh, how is it called, uh, items that you can have that can store undo changes at a time. Then uh, let's take a look. Uh, what's the best approach to this? Or best example, uh, let's see. I'm trying to look for a simple one. So copy line. Mm. Well, I don't. F I can't really find a simple example. Mm. Let's just take this one. So this one has a defer history commit. So in a sense, it would do this at the end here, right? So the defer really just does that automatically for you. You can just say it. Uh, so a lot of the times, I would forget the history commit uh, or. You know, in a sense, I just place it here in the beginning, I defer it, and it just happens. And then you can say, I want to push the selected pointer. So the selected would be the text that is currently selected. And um, so it saves that on uh, when you press space. So space in here, it does a little bit more complex things than you might think. Um, so space can do three types of actions. You can see here, it can... Um, separate words because, like I said, they are nodes, so you actually have to separate them into separate text nodes. So you can see here, if we're inside of a text, um, it kind of creates a new text and it tries to do all kinds of shit. Um, or if you go at the start, it should try to make a new text node that you jump to. Uh, or if you're at the end, it should try to make a new text node at the end of the selected word you were just on, and stuff like that. So this is all kind of happening in here. So, and you can see here the selected always gets changed to a new text, and then basically we can redo that. 
a very basic overview. <laughs> uh, I kind of have a key map. Uh, don't look at this abomination, but um, I don't use this currently, but um, I kind of wanted to use it. And in a sense, I, I was able to draw this. Um, and essentially, I wanted like a, a way to transform um, the way an action in the editor would respond to the keys and maybe it would have control and maybe here you would see uh, it had the held information so you can actually decide if something should be holdable or not so like holdable would be you can um, like hold the key and it would kind of quickly do the task once again or like the action again uh, not using this right now and I have the theme in here, it's very simple. Uh, save and load, works based on byte save, byte copying and loading. Not too nice, but it works. Um, and here's the way I lay out the theme editor uh, that you see. So all this code just to do the UI. It's actually very nice, um, very simple to do. And I mean, that's about it. Uh, the editor is just uh, a lot, you know, it's it's a lot of code right now. Um, that's really about it. Um, if you want to know more, uh, I would suggest uh, for some of the technical things here, maybe check out Odin. Uh, I love it. It's very nice. Um, I'm going to use it for the end of this project. And yeah, it's, it's in general very nice, very simple. And uh, like I said, follow me on Twitter if you want to see more development. Uh, I know this video was kind of uh, up and down, but um, kind of just on top of my head. But if you want to follow it, uh, I'm just working on it alone. Um, but yeah, see you.